Hello heroes and Zargons, my name is Matt, or Blackbird if you prefer, and this is The Trials and Tribulations of Zargon, a series which details the many ways in which the Emperor's heroes foil Zargon and his minions in their plots to conquer the Empire. In it, we'll review the published quests and any house rules or modifications we're using to make the game more interesting and challenging. In this episode, I'll be discussing and ranking all of the hero spell cards in the game. In the short time our channel has been up, the idea of the homebrewed hero leveling system has garnered the most interest. After David posted his video about the specific cards in the wizard leveling deck from his Zargon slash game developer mindset, I set about my task of responding to it from the hero player's viewpoint. I thought the easiest way to do that would just be to rank each of the cards based on my feelings about their usefulness. The wizard leveling deck, and to some extent the elf leveling deck, deals heavily with the magic spells available in the game. No new spells were created. I thought that since I was ranking cards that were giving me access to the spells, that I should also rank the actual spells, since obviously level cards' usefulness would be somewhat tied to the usefulness of the spells they were giving me. And then I realized that with 78 spell cards in the various decks from the game, it would be too much to go through all of them in one shot. So, this video is going to focus on the spell cards that are designed for the heroes to use, namely the Air, Fire, Water, and Earth decks from the original game, the Elf spell deck from the Mage of the Mirror Elf Quest expansion, and the Detection, Protection, and Darkness spells from the Wizards of Morkar expansion. I'll be using a generic tiered ranking system that I got from TierMaker.com, with F being the lowest rank and S being the highest. I'll start with the four original spell groups. The movement spells Swift Wind, Veil of Mist, and Pass Through Rock are ranked the lowest. Swift Wind and Veil of Mist I put in rank E. I barely ever use these spells. They have limited use in very specific circumstances. Pass Through Rock is a bit more useful to let a hero move around, but not get separated from the rest of the party. And also we've house ruled that a hero under the influence of Pass Through Rock will reveal any rooms that they enter but any monsters in those rooms will be unaware of this unless the hero ends their turn in that room. So it also has a use to safely scout out parts of the dungeon. I put this spell in rank D. I also put Fire of Wrath in rank D. There are only three attack spells in these original spell decks, and Fire of Wrath is the weakest, causing only one body point of damage if the enemy doesn't block it. Ball of Flame, being basically the same spell, only slightly stronger, and causing two possible body points of damage, moves up to rank C. Sleep and Tempest are good spells with similar effects, trading off one set of weaknesses for another. Tempest is an automatic hit, making the target miss its next turn. The target can still defend attacks, however. Sleep, on the other hand, causes the target to miss multiple turns and be unable to defend. The problem with Sleep is that it isn't an automatic hit the target gets a chance to break the spell. Both Sleep and Tempest are going in rank B. In rank A, I put Courage and Rock Skin. These are great spells for buffing up a character, but they come with trade-offs. Courage gives you two extra attack dice, but only lasts as long as you can see an enemy, meaning you must take a turn during a battle to cast it, and once the battle is over, so is the spell. Rock Skin gets rid of the problems I just mentioned for Courage, you can cast this spell at any time, and it will stay in effect through battles and exploration for as long as the targeted hero does not take damage. The trade-off here is that you only get one extra defend die instead of Courage's two dice. Genie also gets placed in rank A as the strongest of the three original attack spells. An attack with five dice is very powerful, but of course it isn't foolproof. You still have to roll the dice for skulls, and the enemy still gets to defend. And if you try to tell me that Genie has another use, I... Don't use Genie to open doors. Just don't do it. Healing is very needed in this game and at times very hard to come by. Heal Body and Water of Healing go in rank S. I use these spells in every dungeon. I won't do this for every spell group, but I do want to point out something at this point. If you average out the ranks of the original spell decks that I just covered, the Fire deck has the lowest composite ranking, tying the air deck with a C+. The water deck comes in at a B- and the earth deck at a B+. And yet, out of the four spell groups, I find that 
I exhaust my three fire spells in dungeons much more often than any of the other groups. This just goes to show that this is not an exact science, and it gives testament to the subtle complexities of this game, which is what keeps us all interested. HeroQuest as a whole, and its individual components, are more than just a sum of their parts. Let's move on to the Wizards of Morkar expansion decks. The Detection, Protection, and Darkness spells. I do not like these spells. I do not find them useful. Coming in at rank F, Dispel. It must be cast on a spellcaster, which greatly narrows down the potential targets. That target then loses a random, unused spell from their deck. If it wasn't random, it might be more useful, but I wouldn't want to waste a turn on this in battle. Invisibility is basically the same as Veil of Mist, letting you move unseen for one turn, presumably through an area with monsters. I ranked Veil of Mist E, and so Invisibility gets the same. Clairvoyance also gets rank E. Getting to see the layout on one room of the dungeon won't make that big of an impact. If you want to see a room, ready your heroes and open the door. Oh, and if you happen to pick a room that's empty, you just wasted your spell. Treasure Hoard. You get to draw three treasure cards, and you must keep all three. This could be great, or it could be disastrous. Three wandering monster cards? No thank you. Also, they misspelled Hoard. H-O-R-D-E, as it's spelled on the card, is a large group of people. H-O-A-R-D is a verb, meaning to stockpile and guard or the noun referring to the things being stockpiled and guarded. I don't imagine the game designers meant for this spell to conjure anthropomorphic piles of treasure that would come after the hero. This card goes to rank D. Wall of Stone and Cloak of Shadows also go to rank D. They have their uses in providing some protection from danger for your heroes, but they also protect the monsters from your heroes. They impede heroes and monsters equally, and so are only of limited use. Future Sight, allowing a hero to re-roll any attack, defense, or movement dice could be helpful. Unfortunately, since it only lasts until the end of the caster's next turn, you have to cast it preemptively and hope that something happens during that turn to warrant its use. Or rather, hope that you don't need to use it, because that would mean you rolled well to begin with. I put this card in rank C. Arrows of the Knight, the only attack card in these three expansion decks. It attacks for two dice of damage, and lets the monster defend based on their mind points. Not horrible, but not the strongest attack spell in the world. Rank C. Lastly, Chains of Darkness, which causes a monster to miss one attack and movement turn, although they can still defend or cast a spell. Getting a free attack on a monster, even if they can defend, is pretty good. I give this one a B. The last hero spell deck to cover is the Elf spell deck from the Mage of the Mirror. There are eight spells in this deck, all but one of which are pretty good. Twist Wood gets an F. I'm not interested in destroying equipment that the huge percentage of monsters don't have anyway. Disappear gets a C. Where Veil of Mist and Invisibility got E's because they only lasted for one turn, Disappear lasts until the hero rolls higher than an 8 for movement, so you have a 66% chance of staying invisible each turn to scout out as much of the dungeon as you can or want to. Flashback is Future Sight from the Detection deck, done correctly. Instead of casting it preemptively for a turn, you can cast it at any time to redo a hero's turn, and it doesn't even count as an action to cast it. This spell gets a B. Slow and Deep Sleep also get ranked B, while Hypnotic Blaze gets bumped up to an A. These spells all hinder monster actions in some way. Slow reduces a monster's movement to one square and reduces that monster's attack and defend by one die, and is a permanent effect unless that monster can somehow get out of your line of sight. Not likely, with only one movement square per turn. The problem with the Sleep spell is that monsters can block it, Deep Sleep can't be blocked, but the trade-off is that it only works on monsters with low mind points. Hypnotic Blaze is like Deep Sleep on steroids. It can affect a group of enemies at once, it is most likely to affect low mind point enemies, but has the chance to affect enemies with higher mind points as well, and it lasts for three turns. The only downside is that it can affect your other heroes as well, if you aren't careful. Time Stop gets an A. It's just an automatic double turn for one of your heroes. 
One extra attack from the Barbarian, or one extra spell, is sometimes all you need to get out of a tricky situation. Double Image gets the highest rank, S. This spell causes enemy attacks to miss 50% of the time, and if they do hit, you still get the chance to defend normally. It only lasts for one battle, fading away once your hero can no longer see an enemy, but frankly, if it lasted any longer than that, it would be ridiculously broken. Anyone who's played the Frozen Horror Quest Pack and dealt with the Living Fog Room knows how ridiculous this effect is in battle. That about does it for Hero Spells. In the next installment of this ranking series, I'll talk about all of the various evil spells in the game and their usefulness to the heroes if the heroes were ever to gain the ability to cast them, which is what the Wizard Leveling deck provides. Please like, subscribe, and check out our other videos about individual quests and house rules we've implemented. And let me know if you agree with my rankings or what you'd move around if you think I'm totally off base. Let's plot together in the comments below.